Hey everybody, this is Kevin Kubota for Post Pro, and this week on Post Pro, <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. This week on Post Pro, we're gonna learn how to batch process. We're gonna get Lightroom to do all the work for us, getting all of our beautiful images out that we work so hard on, so we can <laughs> relax a little bit, get more massages, drink coffee, while the computer does all the work. That's what I'm talking about. Ah, ooh, that's a good spot. A little lower, please. A little lower down. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the spot. Okay, let's hit it. Yeah! Okay, now. All your work is done. The hard work of getting the images tweaked, organized, picked out, enhanced in Photoshop and Lightroom. We want to get them out to the customer, so we're going to batch process these images. And if you remember earlier, we took the images from Lightroom into Photoshop. Now, if you don't remember that, basically what we did was we selected the images that we wanted to edit, and Command or Control E takes that image, makes a copy of it, takes it to Photoshop and lets you tweak on it in Photoshop. And it's linked, it's stacked with the original image in Lightroom. So as soon as you do your tweaking to the image, all you need to do is close it, save it, send it back to Lightroom. So here's an image that I've worked on. I've already enhanced it, put a border on it with our Vortex tools here, and I did some black and white conversions. And I'm done, I want to send it back to Lightroom so that it becomes part of the set. And all I do is Command or Control, if you're on a PC, W, which is shortcut for close the window. And Photoshop should say, do you want to save this? Just hit Enter or click on Save. It will save whatever adjustments you made and send it right back to Lightroom where it's updated with whatever changes you have. Now the only thing that you need to do at this point is to then hit S on your keyboard to stack. Here's the original, here's the new enhanced version from Photoshop. They're linked already, you just type S for stack. And the uncool version is now hidden behind the cool version because what you see is what you get. In other words, if you see it in Lightroom, when you batch process, that's what you're gonna get. And I don't wanna get the old one and the new one, just the new one. Okay, so stack, hide the ones you don't want. What you see is what you get. Now, all my images are back. My enhanced images are there. I'm ready to batch process these to deliver them to the client. I'll select all the images and go to the export button down here in the bottom of your screen. And in the export dialog box, I've created presets, which you can create too, once you go through and set up all the settings you want. So let's go do that. Exporting to, you have an option to send it to the same folder every time or choose a folder later. And this is the one that we're gonna save because each time you export, it's gonna be a new client, it's gonna go to a different folder. So let Lightroom ask you when you run this, which folder, choose folder later. I'm not gonna rename them. And since these are for proofing, it's gonna be JPEG and the quality 60 or 70 Somewhere around there is plenty. Remember, you could use 80 for a full quality print. So if it's just for proofing on the web or Facebook or whatever, 60 to 70 is fine for that. sRGB is the color space you want to use. If you remember our color management lesson a couple episodes ago, uh, sRGB is perfect for the screen. It's a smaller color gamut. It's great for the screen, great for the web. Not the best one for printing if you really want the most quality from your images, but it's fine for web proofing or screen viewing. Okay, we're gonna resize these so that the long edge, again, depending on where you're gonna display these, if it's gonna be on your uh, projection system in your studio, you probably want maybe 1,000 to 1,200 pixels. If it's for your blog, you probably only want six to 800 pixels. So let's say these are gonna be proofed on my website and I only need about 800 pixels. 72 DPI. I'm gonna add a little sharpening for the screen, low amount. This sharpening tends to be pretty heavy, so I always go with the lower amount here. The watermark I'm gonna choose is logo for proofs in the bottom right. And then after export, I will show in Finder to show me the proofs. OK, 
okay and hit export choose folder window comes up because that's the option I asked for typically for my clients I will put this right into the client folder that they came from in a folder I have called JPEG proofs you know I've already set up a folder for the proofs so I'll just choose that and we'll let her rip up at the top left of your window you'll see an export dialog box that tells you the progress. You can cancel it by clicking the X if you said, oops, I did something wrong, it's the wrong size, or I forgot to change one of the images. Just cancel it with the X button right there. Now, why this is exporting, cool thing to know is that you can go ahead and start another batch if you wanted to. So for example, what I typically do after every job is I'll take a handful of my favorites and I will put those on a blog or the client's special site uh, that you've set up for them and you probably want to process those a little bit differently. So we'll go ahead and do that. So let's say that you have a handful of images. I'll take three that I've post-processed here that I've enhanced in Photoshop, borders and such. And you want to put just your favorites up on the blog. Make a quick blog post about this, this job you just finished. We'll select those images. You can use your filters to grab them. Remember the filters for the stars or your red labels. Command A. Control A to select those three or how many you have. We'll go back to the export dialog box. And this time it's going to be for our blog. Now here's a little tip. I don't use email to post to my blog because it's faster. It's a time saving tip. Most every blog has a function. If you're using WordPress or I use Squarespace or Posterous, all of them have a way that you can email directly to your blog and it'll post that as a new post. So set it up so that if you attach pictures to the email, all you have to do is set that in Lightroom to process it, pass them onto your email program. It will automatically open up a new message, attach the pictures, and it's sitting there waiting for you to address it and type your blog post. So for my blog, I'm gonna use the same settings except I'm gonna shrink them down a little more to 650 pixels. It happens to be the size that I use on my blog. Okay, I'll use the watermarking, of course, the same key thing, but right here it says after export, we're gonna choose my email program or mail. Now, if you don't have that already, you choose open in other application, click on choose, go to your mail program, wherever that happens to be on your computer, probably in your applications folder choose mail choose your mail app there it is select it and now it says right here after export open in mail app Now what we want to do is save this preset so now that we put all these settings in here click on the add button and say this is mail to my blog all right save that in whatever folder you want and create it so now next time you don't have to choose the mail app or anything you just boop, select the preset mail to my blog and choose export the folder is going to be the same clients folder that you choose before but instead of the proofs folder you might have a blog folder set up for them as part of our workflow, if you remember that way back when we did that, open that up, and now that second batch, you can see at the top it says two operations in progress. And as soon as that second batch is done with those three images for your blog, my email program opens up, a new message is started automatically, the three images are attached to the email message. All I have to do is address it. I have a special address here for my blog and type in the subject which is the title of the blog post my latest shoot and then start typing the content for the blog post got it you hit send boom in a few minutes it's up on your blog pictures are there and you're now more popular than ever so save time let your computer do your work use shortcuts and get those images out to the world as quick as you can. Well, tune in next week, Post Pro goers, because we're gonna talk about album layout in Photoshop, something that everybody wants to know 
how to quickly lay out a cool magazine style album layout, whether you're doing it yourself for your albums or you're making composites for seniors. There's a lot of great design tips that can save you time in your album layout. So tune in next week for part one of a two part special edition on album layout in Photoshop. I'll see you next week on PostPro.